Well, good day, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve. A couple videos ago, I covered about a detail about this Burroughs key operated adding machine. And um, today I wrote a blog article where I was kind of thinking about adding machines and calculators and the fact that I've collected them over the years, it seems like, uh, m more than I realized. And so today I'd kind of like to talk about adding machines and calculators and whatnot, and specifically about this key operated adding machine, how it compares in speed and efficiency against a modern 10 key electronic calculator. So stay tuned. I started collecting electronic pocket calculators back in the early 1970s when I was in high school and unfortunately I don't have any of those left in my due to personal circumstances but I do have a small collection of old calculators this is an a sharp EL8131 and uh, it's a kind of a cool little calculator. It dates from, I don't know, maybe the 1980s, I'm not really sure. But one thing that's common to all of these different kinds of electronic calculators, whether it's this kind or the more ma modern uh, accounting bookkeepers style of, uh, you know, standard business type of calculator, whatever that that configuration is what's common to them is the fact that they have a 10 key number pad and this kind of goes uh standard with all the calculators we've been used to since that era since the 1970s or even earlier even like a computer keyboard right has a 10 key keypad and if you're entering numbers into a uh a computer like a spreadsheet program or if you're just uh doing some calculations on a electronic uh, calculator like this you're going to be entering numbers in serial fashion one digit at a time uh, and we kind of take for granted the serial fashion of data entry perhaps and I've taken it for granted uh, up until a few weeks ago when I acquired this Burroughs key operated adding machine this one, I believe, by the serial number dates from the 1940s, like 1942, but these have been around, this mechanism has been around since uh, 1915, roughly, some kind of a time period like that. And it wasn't until uh, a few weeks ago when I got this that I discovered what's different about this kind of an adding machine as compared to your modern electronic uh, 10 keypad configuration is the fact that this enables you to have parallel data entry. Like for instance, I can add a number like 345. I can do all three digits simultaneously. Or, you know, 462, right? And there is my total right there, 807. So it's parallel digit entry. You're entering all the digits of the number simultaneously, at least in theory. And so, I started thinking about this after I got it and fixed it up that perhaps this parallel data entry, you can enter the whole number, like a three digit number, like what I'm playing with here. You, you can enter the whole number simultaneously that it should make for faster calculations, like for addition, for instance, what we're doing here. It should be faster to operate than a standard 10 keypad calculator where you have to enter each digit each digit one at a time. So I was uh, thinking what I needed is to do a speed test to test this theory out. And so what I did is I just went into Excel and I just made up a list of 10 semi-random three-digit numbers and totaled them up and I was going to use this for my speed test. I'm going to use my little pocket digital timer that I use in my dark room. And so what I was going to do is I was going to time myself adding this list of numbers with both the boroughs and then I'll do it with the standard modern desktop electronic business kind of calculator and see uh, what the results are and see if my theory holds out that you can do faster data entry on this than on a 10 keypad modern configuration. So um, I'm gonna, because of my camera angle and the way I'm set up, I'm gonna have to do this upside down. So, <laughs> but I'll do both of them upside down just to be fair to myself. So, 203, 593, 582, 
six one fifty three nine fifty eight three forty seven two thirty eight and five seventy six and that's thirty two seconds which is actually quite slow I, I was able to do it down about 25 seconds if I wasn't doing it upside down so 32 seconds so let's cast oh and did I get the right answer it's uh, yeah I did so 5035 so at least my accuracy is good okay so now I'm going to use the modern electronic calculator okay 203 plus 593 plus 582 plus 449 plus 936 plus 153 plus 958 plus 347 plus 238 plus 576 and that is 27 seconds so clearly um, I'm faster on the 10 key calculator than I am on the Burroughs parallel digit entry uh, calculation and this holds up the difference in time about roughly three to five second difference is what I was able to get using it right side up relative to me and and practicing the same list, list of numbers over and over again and so it kind of raises an interesting question as to why is it not more efficient to use this setup? Well, I think it's pretty clear from observing myself operate both machines that one of the big factors in the speed difference between these two methods of number entry is the fact that in the case of a 10 keypad, all of the keys are very close together to your hand. You don't have to move your hand that far. And of course, the way these keyboards are, are, are configured now, they have sculpted keys on the Casios, like the corner keys are sculpted, and the middle five has a, has a raised circle. Now, I'm not proficient on this like you know, a professional bookkeeper or accountant would be with, in terms of having your fingers on the home key and doing that kind of thing really fast. But, and of course, I was also doing it upside down. But nevertheless, um, it, all the digits are very close together so even though I'm entering them in serial fashion one digit at a time they can be entered very fast comparing it with the burrows with this method you have nine keys in a vertical column for each place value and when you're entering trying to enter these numbers simultaneously what you find yourself having to do is configure your hand in certain like with three three digit numbers for instance we were working with here configure your hand in a certain physical configuration that like for instance um, uh, what is this 546 right to be able to push it like that and then the next number you have to come up with a different shape and this is kind of borne out by some uh, a little bit of internet research I did today where I found an old bulletin board discussion form about calculators from back in 2003 and in this discussion they were talking about these comptometer style adding machines and the fact that the people that were really proficient at them were able to see a number and immediately move their fingers to a three-dimensional configuration and stab the keyboard simultaneously so they they could just go like that like that like that or whatever and even use two hands and so it was a matter of it was a totally different f technique from a 10 keypad that 10 keypad that we're used to today. So this raises a really good question about technique. And that is I think a lot of us are used to these number pads. We've had them for decades. But this here is a totally different technique and it's an arcane technique. Nobody's taught this anymore. But I know that people were taught this technique years ago because I've seen still photographs on the internet from books and other sources of whole rooms full of people in classes uh, learning this and they, they were literally using both hands almost like a touch typing technique for doing these kind of comptometer style keyboards. And um, so I looked on the internet today and I actually found a place, a guy that is reselling reprints of old Burroughs adding machine instruction manuals and I ordered me one of these books and so it's going to come in in probably a few weeks. But when I get it in, I'm going to 
go ahead and work with it and try to see if I can become more proficient at using this style of keyboard. You know, this is really a lot like, if you think about it, it's like a musical instrument. There's more to it than um, merely being able to pick up the instrument and start to play. Even if you learn this thing, I'm sure to stay fast with it and proficient, you have to continue to practice. And there is a lot of resemblance in that sense to the, uh, the, the abacus and especially the Japanese soroban in that in order to become really proficient and speedy at the soroban, you do have to continue to practice with it. And there are various skill levels with the soroban in Japan based on how fast and proficient people become. So I'm thinking that this machine really is a skill required machine. It's not like this where you can kind of poke out numbers, even working it upside down and inefficiently, I was able to get this to, to work faster than this. Um, but so it's, I think the potential of this kind of machine is it is faster perhaps than a 10 keypad, but it requires a lot more training and, and exercise and practice to get that place. Now, a good question to ask is why are you, why Joe, are you interested in doing this? Well, I think the question comes down to a, the similar one pertaining to typewriters. See, I can buy an old typewriter from the 1930s, let's say, at a thrift store, and I can take it home and I can immediately begin to use it because I know the keyboard. It's the same keyboard as what we use with computers. And I learned touch typing back in high school in the early 1970s on electric typewriters. And so uh, I basically know the keyboard configuration and how to use it. And that configuration has been around for 100 years or more. But this particular system right here is kind of different. This is not the same as a 10 keypad. And so uh, I think it is a totally different instrument and I'm going to have to learn to use it. And if I do get this book and if it does uh, have an actual instructions and for, for training and practice, I'm going to try to work with it. If, if I need to, I'm going to have to look at other sources of adding machine course exercises just for addition um, and, and see if I can improve my technique. But it'd be really fun to kind of learn, almost like learning a, a musical instrument for the first time, learning to use this thing efficiently. I mean, I can clearly poke at it, you know, but to be able to use it so you can enter numbers, uh, all the digits simultaneously, faster than what you could do with one of these, that's going to be the challenge I look forward to. So there's one more thing that you can do with these uh, comptometer style adding machines that's really fun. I actually find it more fun than addition, and that is multiplication. And so let me show you how you do it on one of these machines. So I, I came up with just a little problem. This is 675 times 283. And it, uh, so the way you do this problem is you're going to take the larger of the two numbers, which is the 675, and you're going to form it on the keyboard. And then you're going to start with the least and even digit of the other one, and you're going to add it this many times, which is three times. And then you shift the 675 over one column and do it eight times, and then you shift it over one column again and finally do it uh, two times. So let's see how that works. So I'm going to form the 675, and I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, and then shift it over 1 and do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Shift it over once more and do 1, 2. And my answer should be, uh, let's see if we got it, 191025. 191025. Well, this has just been a brief little video about some more playing around with my Burroughs Comptometer style adding machine and seeing how I can learn to use it. As I indicated earlier, if I get some good instructional material from back in that era and start practicing with it like it's intended to be, hopefully I can build up my speed and we'll do another speed test against the standard 10 key style modern calculator configuration and see if I've gained any uh, proficiency at it. Well, these are really fun machines to use and there's really nothing like them today in terms of the way they operate and the way you use them to enter numbers. Uh, but uh, anyways, until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve. Happy computing.